Hello crafty friends, this is the Paper Chef here. In today's Brothers Scan and Cut Tips and Tricks tutorial, you are going to learn how to cut out and layer patterned paper, and you're also going to learn how to cut out a stamped image. The stamped image we'll be cutting out is this little squirrel. It's from the Banner Year stamp set by Stampin' Up! And the patterns we'll be cutting out are these patterns here, and another, another pattern on the other side of this paper, this is called the Gilded Autumn Specialty Designer Series Paper by Stampin' Up. I'll show you the coordinating colors in just a little bit, and I will show you the full sheets of that paper and both sides of it. It's double-sided. Okay, let's start with this piece here. It's very easy. It's a foiled type of paper, but even though it's a colored piece of paper, I'm going to use black and white recognition mode. Okay, so let's just turn off my light here and just you can just see the screen better. And you're gonna see this when you start your scan and cut. I'm using the SDX 125. It seriously does not matter which scan and cut you have. You can follow along with whichever scan and cut you have. For everything I'm gonna be showing you today, it works with any model. You're gonna go scan, you're gonna click on scan, and you're gonna click on direct cut. Now you're gonna click on the machine. This is just where you wanna temporarily store the information. And the other option is online, but we're going to store it on the machine. Now go in here and make sure you're in black and white recognition mode. I'm going to explain some tips and tricks later about the other paper. Well, actually, to tell you the truth, color recognition mode never worked today for me, but I, I, will, I will tell you what I tried. And the scan area, you can use 12 by 6 if you want, or 12 by 12 scan area. Now other models, if you're not using an SDX, you might not have these two options. I'm just gonna go ahead and scan in the 12 by six. I'm using black and white recognition mode. So I'm gonna click okay. And I'm gonna click start. Now I'm not using this paper here because this is for my paper share. Last chance to sign up for my paper share. Uh, I'm, I don't wanna cut this paper apart. I'm gonna cut paper that I've already started to cut. But I need to just trim it real quick. So let me show you. I just wanna show you this though. This is, this is how successful I was. When you see something like this, I'm gonna call this, let me just double check before I call it 100%, yes. Now, meaning every single time there was a full leaf, a full acorn, or anything, it cut out. So this is 100% success rate, meaning I selected only this area, and it cut it out for me, so I'm calling that 100% success rate. Let me put a piece of paper behind here so you can see what I mean. Okay, so that's what we're about to do. But if I use this paper again, which I'm gonna do, I wanna now use it down here. I need to trim this off. Now if I use a paper trimmer, I'm gonna end up lopping off. Let me see, make sure I have my scissors here. Yes, I did. Okay, if I use a paper trimmer and I try to cut a line across, I'm gonna end up cutting it across, messing up this leaf and this one. So in, in other words, get your scissors and trim off the pieces you don't want. Now the reason, there's a reason. If you don't do this right now, you're gonna waste a lot of time because the scan and cut is going to try to recognize the part of the paper you just cut out. In fact, it's gonna do a great job. It's gonna see all these shapes and it's gonna try to recognize those and cut them out and you're gonna have to try to edit them and delete them. So really, I don't want all that. I just want this. This is what I wanna cut out right now. Okay, so that's the leftover piece of my six by six. I have loads of projects to show you. If you're new to my channel, I always show you the projects at the end of my tutorial. I'm gonna show you what you can do with these embellishments after you cut them out. So let's put this on the mat. It doesn't matter where you put it on the mat. I'm just gonna, because you're gonna scan it, right? I'm just putting it on the top. I'm definitely putting it on the top half of my mat, but it doesn't really matter where on your mat. There's different parts of your mat that may have better stickiness. So I put it on the middle of my mat because the middle of my mat happens to be more sticky than the edges of my mat, even though I'm constantly resticking my mat. And there's tutorials on how to do that on this channel as well. So. Even though, again, this is color, the, the, even though these are foiled in copper and gold, I'm still using black and white recognition mode. There's no reason to use color recognition mode when you have good contrast between the foreground and the background as you do here. There's good contrast. And this is, this is a piece of very vanilla on the background. So the, these are gonna be able to be recognized without using color recognition mode. I'm gonna click OK. Now, it did another great job. Look at that, great job. Let me zoom in and show you. I think I have a 100% success rate again. This, this leaf here wasn't really, a, or this acorn wasn't really f a full acorn. So I think I have great success rate. But you're saying, Paper Chef, this is a hot mess. 
What do you do with this hot mess? Why is your why is your mat, you know, recognizing all these things? Okay, or why is your scan and cut recognizing all these things? Well, the reason is because I'm constantly resticking my mat. There's constantly little things on my mat, and these all get recognized. So the scan and cut is doing a good job recognizing it. So there's three ways to get rid of this background noise that we don't want to cut out. Okay, so the first way to get rid of it is just to make a selection. Take your little stylus and make a selection. Okay, first way to get rid of it. Now I got rid of a lot of that, so now I'm not recognizing it. Okay, the second way to get rid of it, ignore object size. You don't want to ignore objects that are too big because if you ignore objects that are too big, you're going to ignore the very thing you're trying to cut out. So you can actually watch as you, as you go higher that you're just ignoring the tiny objects and not the big ones. But I have these tiny little leaves there, so I'm not going to go any bigger than that, uh, 0.31 of an inch, because if I do, I'm going to start to get into the half inch leaves and things like that. So that was the second way to get rid of what you don't want to cut out. I click OK. The third way to get rid of what you don't want to cut out is by editing. Now first, I'd like to add an outline distance around my objects. I like to have a little bit of a border around my, my objects that I cut out. Let me see if I have any that are loose. I think I used them all. Okay, we're just going to show you. I'm going to add this little border and it's going to be a 0 0.04 inch. The settings will be in the description. Click on here. I mean, not click on here. Click in the description. There's a little arrow in e beneath the video. If you're on a mobile device, it's a little drop down and then it's way easier on a laptop to see the description of the video. In the description of the video will be my settings that I use. All right, so I'm adding a 0 0.04 outline distance. But I told you there's a third way to get rid of what you don't want to cut out. If you go into edit, you can get rid of things by trashing them. Click on the trash can. Like for example, this is a partial leaf. Why would I want to cut that out? I'm going to trash it. I'll zoom in and show you what I'm talking about. Okay, that was a partial leaf I got rid of. There's another little remnant up there. Hit the trash. Okay, and then let's see, there's another little piece. So the reason I'm doing all this work is because it'll take, well, number one, if I don't want something to cut out, if it's not a full image, I don't want to cut it out. Number two, I'm very into conserving my paper and using it for other things. I can use this piece again because I didn't cut out partial leaves. And look, I can use it. Look at this nice little strip. You'll see how I use nice little strips in my projects at the end of this video when I show you my, my card projects. I, I had quarter inch strips like this that I actually used as part of my card backgrounds. So I like to especially conserve designer series paper that's specialty with foil on it. We're gonna click OK, click OK, click OK. There's way more OKs to click when you're on an SDX type of machine. When you're on a CM machine, there's way fewer options. But it still does, you're doing the same thing, okay? Select, we're gonna click on cut, and then we're gonna click on start. So I'm gonna see you in a few minutes, but I will mention a couple, one thing as it gets started. If you're using a CM machine and you're cutting out this paper, this, this designer series paper by stamping up, pretty much the kind that's not thick, just is not really thick, even though it's called specialty, then you should be using a blade depth of three if you're using a CM model. I don't need to set my blade depth because STX uses auto blade technology, so I don't need to set the blade depth. So we'll see you in a couple minutes. When we cut out these, I'll show you how, how these look. Thank you. Crafty friends, we're back. We click OK when it's done cutting. And then we can either unload our mat, or if you have any trouble with your mat loading, which sometimes I do, today's not a bad day. I'm having a good mat loading day. But if you had any trouble, you would just leave it loaded and then just move on to the next part. Now, it's pretty it's, it's pretty much aligned. I'm happy with how well it's aligned, but I, I think it could do a little better. And we could use the scanning cutting position adjustment, which I've done other videos on. It's a little bit more, there's a little bit more white space to the left, but I'm okay with that right now because I'm not going to realign it for this tutorial because some of those, some of them are looking okay. I mean, these are pretty good. So what I'll do is I'll put them on a different background just to give you a little contrast there as I peel them off the mat. So you just use your little spatula to peel them off the mat and then you have like loads and loads of fall embellishments. Just amazing. They're all foiled already. And there, there are, there's a foiling kit for, 
the scan and cut. I used, I've used the embossing kit and the stamping kit. I have not used the foiling kit, but you can do some foiling with your machine. And I'm sure it would do detail like this, but I just like that the paper is already done for me. Very inexpensive, beautiful foiled embellishments, ready for fall. I just hacked that one up. You know I'm kind of rough if you've been watching my channel. I kind of don't. I'm not the most conventional crafter. I just kind of roughed up a couple of those leaves. But anyway, so let's let's move on now. So we're going to take... So there you go. We had a great success rate with that piece of foil. Now I'm going to turn on the light now. Okay, I hope you can see those really well. I'm very happy with them. Even, even just the shapes of the leaves, even if you just use the other side, they'd be cool, right? With just those shapes of the leaves with this designer series paper. So there we go. That's how to cut out pattern paper. So I, I told you we're gonna do a couple more things in this tutorial. We salvaged that, maybe you can use that scrap. I told you we would cut out pattern paper. I told you I would talk about layering the pattern paper. So we have, we have beautiful foiled embellishments. Okay, beautifully foiled embellishments. I don't need to layer these. Why would I layer them? They're already beautifully foiled. I mean, if I was gonna layer them, I'd put cardstock behind them, something that's not foiled. But however, these are not beautifully foiled. These are beautiful, but not foiled. So I'm gonna layer these, these ones. These ones are good to layer because what I'd layer them with is actual foil. Okay, so again, just trim off this part so it doesn't confuse your scan and cut because it's gonna try to scan on all these. Let's use this piece here. Stick it wherever you want on the mat. And let's do what we need to do for the part, first part of layering patterned paper. You do exactly what we just did a minute ago, okay? We just do, the first part of it is scanning, direct cut, right? We're gonna direct cut, black and white recognition mode, and exactly what we just did. So let me get the stylus, and we're gonna go here to the home button, delete all patterns, okay? Because we don't wanna save that one from before. And we're going to just do this now you know this is going to be a good success rate i mean not just because i'm telling you but because you can see my piece of paper before i had almost 100 percent success rate look except for this piece here so we will go ahead and scan in the whole piece of paper and i'll show you but we're not going to actually cut out all these again because i, I want to just continue this next part of the tutorial without stopping so we'll, we'll select you know a couple leaves and an acorn or a couple acorns and a leaf leaf leaves anyway scan we're at the home button we hit scan Direct cut, save it to our machine temporarily. All right, black and white recognition mode and start. Okay, so this part, I'll go a little bit faster for the first part because you already know this. It's a review of what we just did. We're cutting out patterned paper. Nothing different. And what we're doing is we're gonna be layering, meaning we're gonna put a bigger, we're gonna cut out these little patterns and then we're gonna put a bigger layer of some foil, some cardstock foil behind those. Okay, that's what we're doing. So we click OK. Now see that great success rate. I'll just zoom in so you can see. All those were selected. Okay, so suffice it to say, we're happy with that. Now I'm not gonna do all that right now. Even though I'd love to cut these all out, I just, I'm gonna be cutting them all out. In fact, I usually cut out a whole 12 by 12 sheet and it would take, you know, maybe 15 minutes or so. We'll just cut out these few. Here's an acorn, a few leaves. Okay, that's, that's good enough in that little side. Click on it. So we've selected an area, and now we now we're going to ignore object size, maybe up to three or three tenths of an inch or 0 0.31 again. Okay. Then we're going to delete any more that we don't want, meaning we'll edit. Yeah. See, I need to edit just to get rid of that little bit. First, I before I edit, I like to add my outline distance so I don't forget. Outline distance of 0 0.04. That's my first cut. Edit. And that little, let's see if we can get that little piece. See that? Edit, zoom in, trash that. Fine. We have one, two, three, four, we have those little things to cut. Six little things to cut. Again, if you're using a CM model, your blade depth is set to three. Oops, but I'm using auto blade. Let me show you what that looks like, just so you're not confused. Auto blade has no blade depth. If you don't see a blade depth, then ignore that part of the tutorial. No blade depth, it's auto blade. It doesn't need a blade depth, it figures it out on its own. But if you have a machine, like any kind of CM model that has a blade, then you're gonna set your blade depth. And I would set it to three. That's what I personally use when I'm cutting Stampin' Ups 
designer series paper. And I've been cutting I've been cutting this paper for many years now and it's always seems to be a blade depth of three. I mean just depending on unless it's this type of specialty paper that's a thick kind. This is not a thick kind of paper, this is just a foiled paper. But we do make specialty designer series paper that's pretty thick. Alright, so it's cutting it pretty fast. And it, it always says it, it always goes in minute increments. I don't know, I think it'll take a whole minute. Meaning even if it's two minutes, it just or uh, even if it's like 20 seconds it'll still say a minute which is nice because that's like rounding up all right so good happy with that let's click OK so now we're going to very important now we're going to just I, actually I'll show you this part let me show you this part we're not unloading the mat very very important do not unload the mat for this step when you lay when you're layering but do put the foil put the foil let me I'm gonna put these up here my little shapes that we cut out Put the foil where you're pulling this off from. Okay, get rid of the parts you don't need. This is this is the layering I did earlier. So I'll get rid of all that. Okay, this is a copper. This is called the brushed metallic cardstock. Brushed metallic. It's like a copper cardstock. All right, it's part of that gilded autumn suite. Okay, so I'm pulling this off. Now normally I would do a bunch of these at once, but we're just doing a few. Cutting the pattern paper. Okay. I just did an update on my machine and it actually was aligned right before my update. And then I did my update and now it's not really aligned as much, but so be it. I will align it later. This one's pretty good though. I, I'm very happy with this leaf. Same amount of white space, or in this case, very vanilla space on the around the whole thing. But you see how a couple of times, like that one, there's a little bit more white space on the left. But I'm still very happy with how these cut out. And there's no way I'd want to fuzzy cut these. There's no way. I mean, this is that's just saves you so much time. It's unbelievable. All right, so remember I just took it right from there. I took this piece of paper right from this area. Now I could have I could have had it up there. It would have been a lot easier. But I, like I said, my corners are not as sticky, so I like to use sort of the middle of the mat. So we're gonna put this here because if I put that there, I know that when I make my layers, this is an area that is going to be covered. That's where I just had it. So let's do this. There's there's what I want to put the layers on. Now, what's a layer? A layer is, let me see if I can find the ones from earlier. Let's see if this is the one from earlier. I think this is. This is okay. So earlier I cut the this piece of designer series paper out, and then I cut I cut layers out in the copper foil. A layer is when you have an offset. It's an offset. It means that you can you can add dimension to your projects by cutting out shapes that are bigger than the original shape. So that's what a layer is. Okay, so you can do this with stamped images, pattern paper, all that. So we remember, recall that we just did a 0 .04 outline distance. Okay, we just did a 0 .04 outline distance. So to make a layer, we need to make the outline distance bigger than the one we just cut. So let's go back and we click on the layer or the outline distance, sorry, that's how you're making your layers. And you're gonna click on 0.08. That's me, that's how big I wanna make mine. If you wanna make it a bigger outline distance, then you increase this. Don't go, I wouldn't go that much bigger than 0.12 because it'll look really funny. And it'll start kind of molding together where they don't really, they start melding into one big giant blob. So I think 0.08 is good, but you can experiment with what you want for your outline distance. Click okay, click okay and click cut okay so we're going to cut the now we're cutting out the outline for these patterned images okay if this were a stamped image same thing you can lay your, your stamped images i have tutorials on doing that loads and loads of time on this channel so if you're new to my channel please subscribe if you have a scan and cut because you'll get to see different ways to use it that that may may be unconventional and something different. I make boxes, we make 3D items. There's so, there's so much you can do with this machine. I have courses, I'll link to those in the description as well. And I think about now, it's the middle of the month, I'm gonna be generating coupons for $9.99 for all my courses. And so check in the description in the next five days and you'll see that. All right, click OK. Here we are, we have these bigger images okay so this is what we're going to do i'm going to do i need to unload the mat yes 
I don't really need to unload the mat actually. But just so you can see this, we are going to move the machine and you can kind of see what happened and I need to turn on my light. So what we did is we layered, we made layers that are bigger. Okay, so the reason I have my Cajun Craze marker here, because sometimes, once in a while, when you use foil, let me just go in here, where I was getting it off the mat, a little bit of white shows through. So with our foil, and by the way, if you have a CM model of machine, let me put some paper here for effect. If you have a CM model and you're cutting Stampin' Up! really thick foiled cardstock like this, you're gonna need a blade depth of about a five, maybe even a six. But see what happens is our, our cardstock, our foiled cardstock, not our regular cardstock. Regular cardstock that we create, that you create cards with, is also blade depth of five, but it's dyed all the way through. Our foiled cardstock, however, is not dyed all the way through, and sometimes you get these white edges. And it just sometimes bothers me, so I take a little marker, and it's no big deal. And I'm just using Cajun Craze because it's a coordinating color. And I just sort of colored in a little bit of the little white spots that are showing. Okay, and I used Cajun Craze marker, but of course, you could use a blend, you can use some crumb cake, which is a good thing to use for, it, crumb cake's also coordinating color. It's also a good thing to use whenever you're trying to ink around the edges of anything. Okay, so that's what, that's what I like to do with those little white parts showing. But that's not the point of the tutorial. The point of the tutorial is how to layer patterned paper. Well, one of the points of the tutorial, so look at that. Is that cool or what? So let me get some get dimensional. Because you want to use some adhesive, let's get some, I'm gonna use some Stampin' Up! Dimensionals. These are our foam adhesives. And I'm gonna just take a couple of those and put them on the, actually you don't even need two, just one. One's good. I don't think it'll even fit two. So you want to put this onto that because if you don't pop it up, you don't get the real effect of having the dimension. So let's put that on this background, crumb cake background, so you can see that. How cool is that? Now contrast that with the one that doesn't have the dimension, but it's still cool. This is really cool as well. I mean, because the foiled ones we cut earlier, we just cut those directly, and now we cut these with some dimension. Now, I like to just do these right away before I lose them, and the reason is, when I say lose them, they, they're kind of paired together. Like this acorn from that I just cut out fits on this background, even though, you would say, aren't all the acorns alike? They sort of are alike. The acorns are sort of alike, but they they don't always cut out exactly alike because, oh, this one is just not cooperating, this dimensional. Because sometimes the acorns, you know, get recognized slightly different. So these little patterns fit exactly with the ones you just cut out. So I like to match them up and pair them up and add my dimension and fix with my little marker right away before I move on to the next part of the tutorial, which is the squirrel. So I thought we have to do some squirrels for the fall. I already have two people. I have a team member, Deb, who let me dig into her paper share because I actually didn't have any, I did, I'm doing this big paper share. And so this is the last chance to sign up for the holiday catalog paper share. And I said to Deb, can I please dig into your paper share? I need a little bit of this gilded autumn for these projects, so she is going to get the things I made with her paper. And she needs a little perk up anyway, so please pray for her because she's actually in the hospital right now. Not with COVID, but with something else. And we are praying for her speedy recovery so she can once again craft like a champ. And there are two of these leaves See what I mean by they're slightly different? Look at this. When you look at this one, see how there's a little nub or nib? See that? It scanned in that little nib. I don't even know what that nib is. It's like a little, I'm going to leave it there because the outside matches it. But that's what I mean. They match up. So your paper matches up. So then this one goes with this paper. So now what I'm going to do is we're going to stamp a couple squirrels and we're going to stamp it onto very vanilla and after I take this all off of the machine I mean everything and I clear off my table and I'm showing you the projects I'm going to show you this gilded autumn paper as well 
before I show you my projects because I'd like you to see how cool this paper is. Now every time I do a paper share, I, order, I have to order 10 packs of paper for each four people. And then I have a specialty deluxe holiday paper share. And that's where the Gilded Autumn comes in. It's part of the deluxe paper share. And I don't, I don't order as many of those, and that's why I didn't have extra this paper. But I will be getting this myself for sure. I'm gonna mass produce some Thanksgiving things. A lot of people need cheering up this Thanksgiving because of everything going on in the world. So it's really important to thank people and to cheer up people in your life. Give them care packages and things. So there we go. Let's put all these here so you can just see what we just did. So here's where we're at. You now know how, this is this part of the tutorial, how cool are all these embellishments. You now know how to cut and layer patterned paper using your scan and cut. And as long as you have contrasting patterned paper, no problem. I'll talk about the other papers when I show you the full sheets. And, you, and when you see my projects, you'll see how I even cut out a couple other things from the paper. So now, real quick, we're just gonna see if we can make a little room here. I don't wanna keep changing my camera angle. I don't have good luck when I change my camera angle in the middle of a tutorial. So what we're just gonna do is try to stamp right there so you can see it. We're gonna take a piece of very vanilla. We're gonna take a piece of, this is just a sponge I have. Very vanilla. What do we have here? Happy Thanksgiving. Nope, we're gonna take Banner Year stamp set. And it's a photopolymer stamp set, meaning the stamps are see-through. See? They're see-through. And they get stained easily, but don't worry about if they get stained. I already took the squirrel out. I've been using Your Sweet a lot. I've used a Treat So Sweet, Be Merry. It's a great stamp set. It, it also, it's a really cool bundle. You save 10% when you buy bundles, and it's something that goes with this, this punch in the bundle. Banners, pick a punch. So banner year, banner year bundle. That's what it's called, banner year bundle. I'll have a link to my store. All right, so here's what we want to do. I've already, I've already inked it up, I mean earlier, with some early espresso. Why early espresso? Because it's a coordinating color. Yes, I'm using the old style ink because that's what I have. I bought the whole neutrals collection and haven't been able to bring myself to get the new style stamp pad. When I already had that kind. So I'm gonna get a couple squirrels and we're gonna just ink it up and we're gonna just stamp a couple squirrels on here. Okay? That one's okay. The first time you stamp it's usually not there's usually something stuck on there. Looks like a piece of lint. Okay, so tap 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 stamp. Tap 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 stamp. Good. I, I'm happy. I have three squirrels. Okay, so we're gonna we're gonna just cut those. Now, you might be if you're if you're a frequent visitor of my channel, you might have seen this stamp and go, oh, she's gonna use her pencil trick, right? Because it's a tips and tricks video. No, I'm actually not gonna use my pencil trick. And for those of you that are new here, the pencil trick is when you're st you stamp an image, and if it's not fully connected, then the scan and cut's gonna try to cut inside the gaps, right? And then it's going to so you need to enclose those gaps with a pencil, but I don't need to do that with this little squirrel. And the reason I don't need to do it is because it cut out just fine when I added an outline distance. Okay, so I'm gonna stick the squirrels on there. And let me turn out my light so you can see the settings. I'd like to get in real close here. We are going to now, what we're doing is cutting out stamped images. And you guessed it, if you guessed it, it's the same process of cutting out pattern paper when you're cutting out stamped images. You're going to click on home. Delete all patterns. So we're home. Now we're going to click on, we're going to cut out the stamped image. We're going to go scan, direct cut, right? Direct cut. Save it to the machine. Start. It's going to scan in the squirrels. I'm using, again, black and white recognition mode because even though I stamped them in, in a color, Early Espresso on very vanilla paper, I still want to use black and white recognition mode because there's good contrast between the foreground and the background. Okay, so let's talk about this little tail. 
Let's first zoom in and show you the tail. If you weren't using an outline distance, if you, don't, if you didn't want to cut something out with an outline distance, then of course you would have needed to use the pencil trick. Let me zoom in here and show you. See how it got in there and it started, it recognized these. Let me zoom in some more. See, because I know my customers are going to want to see how it did with that tail. Here, see how it got in there and got the lines of the tail? It can get in there, it's very sensitive. The scan and cut can get in there and recognize those lines and cut them out. It's that sensitive, it's that good. However, you don't want it to, you don't want it to. When you add your outline distance, these little areas will disappear and it'll make an outline around the whole thing. So in other words, it saves us from having to use our pencil trick. We're gonna click uh, preview and it's gonna save us. I do need to do that ignore object size though. Remember, I need to get rid of all that little junk up there. You know, that, that got recognized. Okay, good. When I add that outline distance, watch those little lines disappear. Okay, maybe you can't really watch because I have to edit and zoom in to show you. Here, zoom in again. Because you might not have been able to see that from, you know, you might be watching this on a mobile device. See, the lines have disappeared. No pencil trick needed at all because it perfectly outlines the squirrel. Look at that. So I'm so happy with that. I was so happy to cut the squirrels earlier. I know, it's the little things in life that make me happy. Okay, so click on cut. So process is the same now. It's going to go ahead and cut these three really quickly. So we are using the STX model. It's very quiet compared to the CM model. It has auto blade, as I mentioned, technology. But I believe, in my opinion, and I know everyone has a different opinion and a different experience, but in my, in my opinion, my CM model does a little bit better job cutting out my, my images and my patterns, but I still am very happy with the way the SDX is quiet and fast and, and I don't have to set the blade depth each time. But if you are using a CM model, you're gonna set a blade depth right now of, of a five because you're using Stampin' Up! cardstock. This is the Whisper, I mean not Whisper White, this is the very vanilla, it's a thick type of cardstock. Now Whisper White is a, is a blade depth of four, but I'm not using white, I'm using very vanilla. So we are done with this part. Now we're gonna go ahead and say, we're gonna go ahead and unload the mat. I'm done all this. I can show you, I can show you our results. There's our very, there's our squirrel. There are our squirrels, I should say. Correct grammar here. Let me find my little spatula. And I'm ready to show you some more things. I can turn on my light and make some room on my table. And we will have some fun. All right, so. Spatula is already, here it is, fell on the floor. You can, when you have a bunch of stamped images, like I usually cut a whole page at once, you can bend your mat and it helps get, it helps get the stamped images off of your mat. See that? And it, it keeps you from having to dig under there with your spatula. And I'm very happy with my little squirrels. And I now wanna show you the paper and then what I did with these, with these squirrels. All right, first, there are my squirrels. Second, Gilded Autumn. Third, I wanna show you which, how the success rate I have with the different papers, and then I'll show you my projects. All right, so here's what I have planned. I'm gonna show you the, the specialty paper. So we have, when you, when you get paper from Stampin' Up, some of it comes 12 by 12, some of it comes in a, in a pack of six by six. This is a 12 by 12 designer series paper giving you more options for your projects. It's foiled. It comes with a piece of cardboard in the package to keep it straight. And it's it has coordinating colors, C Cajun Craze, Crumb Cake, Early Espresso, that's why you've been seeing me use Early Espresso ink, right? Mint Macron and Very Vanilla. And of course, you got the gold and the copper foiling in there. And inside our holiday catalog, this Gilded Autumn, is amazing because it has it has this metallic it has brushed metallic cardstock. That's what we've been using to do the layering. We're using the it comes in bronze, copper, gold. So we've been using the the copper. Okay? So that's what we were just using, the copper to do our layering. And this suite also has little acorn trinkets, which I totally want to get these little acorn trinkets. Um, it has basket weave 
ribbon combo pack. It has little punches, beautiful autumn bundle with little punches. Great way to use up your scraps. A little leaf and a acorns and stuff. And then this is what I'm showing you, the Gilded Autumn specialty paper, and that's the suite. That's the Gilded Autumn suite. And if you need a holiday catalog, just use my link in the description. Here's the beautiful Autumn stamp set. I didn't use that because I don't have this. You use what you have, okay? That's, that's the point. Use what you have, whatever materials you have, but that's part of the suite. All right, so now we're talking about the, this is Cajun Craze, and that's a piece of the paper, and then there's the other side. Okay, so this paper here, 100% success rate, or almost 99% success rate. Everything cut out, no problem. Black and white recognition mode, 0 0.04 outline distance, no problem at all. Okay, next piece. Great background piece. Great, great success rate, 100% success rate. Black and white recognition mode, no problem whatsoever. Very smooth, very easy. Okay, this piece here. I tried and tried and tried. I used color recognition mode, I used black and white recognition mode. I didn't have any success with color recognition mode whatsoever. It was very jaggedy and very, very rough. With black and white recognition mode, I had about a 50% success rate. And here's what happened to a lot of my pumpkins though. My, a lot of my pumpkins, this pumpkin's okay. See, it's okay, just okay. A lot of them just got chopped off and, just, and shredded around the edges, look. They weren't smooth around the edges, which it, it wasn't really a problem. Like some got cut up like this because what I did is I layered my pumpkins in my projects. Like I hid the defective parts behind each other and layered up my pumpkins. But it just 50% of the time, my pumpkins didn't come out to any usable format. Even the gourds, just not nothing. Like it doesn't matter if I use black and white recognition mode. I tried, I tried color recognition mode every threshold. I went up to seven threshold of colors, which is, it means more sensitivity. No, nope, no luck whatsoever. So I don't recommend this for the scan and cut. Maybe those little punches would work on these pumpkins. I don't know. I don't have the punches, but somebody can comment in if the if the punches, the punch pack works on this paper. I don't know. And there's the other side. A beautiful piece of crumb cake. Okay, this paper, tried it. No luck whatsoever. Hot mess. Color recognition mode, black and white. Couldn't get the leaves to be recognized. So I used it for backgrounds of cards and patterns. Okay, this one. I didn't, I don't think I tried this one. Mm. Yeah, I didn't try this one because I, I just used it as a background. I didn't try to cut it out, but I bet it would probably work because it's a lot like the first one. So I didn't try that one. And then there's another, that's the back side of that one. And then this one, I didn't try it, but I bet it would work. Okay. So only ones I, the, out of the four I tried, I tried these four. Let's see. I don't recommend this. Don't recommend it. Don't recommend the pumpkins. I mean, I would have been better off fuzzy cutting in the end because it's how long the pumpkins took me. And I totally recommend these two pieces of paper. If you have a scan and cut, this is the paper for you. So then what I did is I took my, I took my little embellishments and I started, you know, I played around with them. And here's what I came up with. I'm going to show you 10 projects. Okay, so here is a happy Thanksgiving card. And here is what I did. I took some scraps of designer series paper and I used this piece as a background. This piece here. No, or you, you saw it, the other piece. I took the other piece, this one, this foiled background piece. I used that as my card background. I did some things with this. This is, this die is from the, it's called In Good Taste or Lit. Tasteful Labels dies. That's where I got this one. And I that's in very vanilla. And I stamped the Happy Thanksgiving from the Banner Year stamp set. In fact, all the stamps I'm showing you are from the Banner Year stamp set. And here's how you can use both the layered and the not layered images. Okay, on a card. And then I put two, I put three squirrels, two I glued right onto the background. And this one I popped up on dimensionals, just as that's popped up on a dimensional. And these ones are popped up these are all on dimensionals, all six embellishments. So I try to do things in groups of threes. This one has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine embellishments total and three lines in the background. So you could see how I used the, the rule of threes all over when I made that card. Okay, so that's a Thanksgiving card. Okay, here's a, here are a couple bookmarks projects. Again, that same background. I'm in love with this foiled background. I just love it. And then I used some copper and some linen. I think the copper one might be retired. I don't know. Use what you got for your ribbons, but I did some fraying at the top of this linen one and the copper one. I did some fraying to make it look sort of like fall. 
Happy fall, y'all. That's my banner year stamp set. Okay, and then for this one, same thing. This one has a squirrel and an acorn, and I used, this is the little treats box, little treat box dies. That's where I got this little die from. Happy fall, y'all. Stamped in early espresso. Now notice something, you might notice this, it might just pop right out at you on the camera. You notice how I used white here. I was thinking there was too much vanilla in this bookmark. Very vanilla is, the, is one of the coordinating colors. So yeah, you technically should use very vanilla to stamp onto. And that's fine when I had this mint macron background. But when I had a background that had vanilla in it, I don't think it looked good with vanilla, this piece in vanilla. So I put it on top of a piece of whisper white. Okay, that's just my design choice. You can do whatever you want. Okay, I'm gonna show you my gatefold. I have a gatefold card, I'm gonna show you that last. Okay, I wanna show you a 3D project here. This is a, maybe I could put it on this background here just so you can see it a little better. So we have right now in our, in our catalog, in our holiday catalog, a suite called, let me find the name of it, Heartwarming Hugs. It's a Christmas type of suite. And it's gonna say, it says mini coffee cups. Now I thought, when I saw mini coffee cup, I thought, huh, mini, I'm thinking four ounce. No, no, these are not four ounce. These are like, more like, a, they're regular coffee cups. I wouldn't even call them mini. But we sell these really cute containers. Here they are, this is it. Heartwarming Hug Suite. And it's called the Mini Coffee Carrier. $5 and you get eight of these containers. They're heavy duty. And I decorated it with designer series paper. I used the World of Good specialty designer series paper from the annual catalog only because that's what I had a lot of. I don't have a lot of this Gilded Autumn. And then I used the Gilded Autumn for the tops of the cups. I'm not done doing this inside of the cups yet because the reason is I just totally can't find my dies. I bought this Warm Hugs bundle and I can't find the dies to wrap the coffee cups in. So I'm gonna get around to that. But we also sell mini coffee cups. Okay, a set of eight of those. And they're for hot beverages, so you can put like cocoa, cocoa in them. And that's the heartwarming hug suite. Okay, so here's what I did with it for fall. Let me make, let me kick this out of the way. So, and I'll, I'll have a link to that. How did the scan and cut help me do this project? Well, it would be impossible to do without the scan and cut. I, I, I did use a paper trimmer for this, for these pieces around the sides. I'll give you the dimensions. It was so easy, I just used a paper trimmer. But for this, I cut out my two and a half inch circles perfectly for the tops of the cups. This die over here is from Most Wonderful Time Medley. But you saw how I got the acorn from the paper and the layer and the leaf and the layer. So I got the circle. So five things just on this lid are using the scan and cut. Acorn, background, leaf, background, and circle, okay? It's just so much easier and precise to do with the scan and cut. And then inside, I didn't finish putting candy in it yet. I mean, it's, it's not really fall yet, right? I mean, it's still summer, but I'm gonna be putting pumpkin spice that's one of them, Pumpkin Spice K-Cup. Here, let me turn it upside down. Turn it right side up at me. By, and look how much room there is. Now my mini coffee cups, my ones that are four ounces that I've been showing that I use in my craft fair series and I, I buy them by like the thousand, those fit just a K-Cup and maybe one other like Lifesaver. So that's how much bigger these cups are. These fit a lot more. These, my crafty friends tell me, my team members are saying that they're putting cocoa in them and stuff, packs of cocoa. I haven't even found the cocoa yet this season, I haven't gotten there. And then this one, same thing. And you can put other, like I put a Starbucks house blend. Okay, so Starbucks K-Cup. I'll put some candy in there. And then the cups had like a, a sloping lid. So I wasn't sure do I want the, I kind of liked it both ways. Sometimes I put the, the slope of the lid up this way and sometimes I put the slope of the lid, you know, that way. Okay, so that's my project. I decided to use white instead of very vanilla to match the cups. So I used a piece of Whisper White for this. So where did I use the scan and cut again? We've already seen, we use it, you know, one, two, three, five times here, five times there, that's 10 times, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. 19 times just on this project. So all these little things are from the scan and cut. The patterns you just learned how to cut out, okay? That's how I cut out the pumpkin. Remember I told you the edges were ragged on my pumpkins? So if you do wanna attempt it, Go for it, but your edges are gonna be ragged and you can just hide them under some of your dyes. This is Tasteful Labels dyes. And that's what I did. I, on the gourd, I just put some leaves on top to hide the raggedness. All right, what else do we have? I told you I'd show you my gatefold card last. I have a few little 
these are called diaper fold pouches and in the diaper fold pouch I used the in good taste designer series paper because it went with the fall theme I used happy fall y'all that same stamp set from banner year I used the banners pick a punch the punch I just showed you to make the edges of these the banners pick a punch and this is that same paper in good taste specialty paper it's a diaper fold I'm trying to show you that you can put a tea here's another one I told you I have like 10 projects so I'm going show here's another project okay so you can put not just a Ghirardelli chocolate I just don't have really good fall colors yet but this one this ginger tea might look okay in there I just thought the Ghirardelli chocolate looked a lot better for fall but look when you make a diaper fold card a diaper fold pouch which I taught how to make on my channel before when you put a Ghirardelli chocolate in there you could also put a tea bag in there okay so these are perfect little gifts to give I'm gonna put the Ghirardelli chocolate back in there because I think it looks better because of the foiled but you could use if you have fall colors like this wasn't really a fall color but you can use tea bags I'm, I'm gonna work on getting some fall color tea bags I already have my winter spice ones and there's other things you could do with this you know with your embellishments you could even take some of your embellishments and put them on the back there too or stamp some acorns back there this is just a stamped acorn and that's my little squirrel in very vanilla and this one I think is whisper white again I was trying to do that contrast yeah let's see see how I was I was trying to do a contrast because I already had the squirrel in very vanilla so I, I put the stamp the background in whisper white just to give it some contrast okay and my last project okay is this gatefold card so this has all of the elements of you know what we just did and has the it has the well in this case I stamped the squirrel I could have done a 3d squirrel all these layered elements cut with the scan and cut this piece is from forever greenery this little piece of gold thread is from forever greenery it's good when you make a gatefold card to tie it shut so it doesn't pop open and notice how I just sort of put the happy fall y'all on there see how I let it hang over the side and that's it I didn't stamp on the inside I could have put happy things green I just stamped a couple yeah I did stamp a couple acorns that's very vanilla on the inside as well and if you want you can put designer series paper here and here as well all right so I hope you enjoyed this tutorial on how to cut out pattern paper and stamped images using your scan and cut I hope you like the projects I showed you and I hope it gave you some inspiration and ideas on what you can do with the materials you already have in your craft stash that's all for now this is the papered chef